Okay, it's now three minutes past the hour. We can start our webinar. Thank you all for taking your time to participating in today's webinar. Uh, you are most welcome. And um, as always, feel free to send your chats in the chat box if you have any questions. If you have any comments, just feel free to put them on the chat box there. And I will read them out uh, to the presenter. If you have any concerns, I'll read them out to the presenter who will address your concerns uh, at the end of his presentation. Okay, I'm your host. My name is Joyce Shikuku. I am the East Africa Regional Coordinator for Wells Mountain Initiative, and I'm based in Kilifi, Kenya. We are in week seven of the Academy. Our session focus this week is measuring success and indicator development. And today our topic of discussion is uh, monitoring and evaluation in CBO and uh, CBO and NGO focus. Today we have our presenter. Uh, his name is Philip Oduma. He's a program coordinator who works with USAID Nairobi. He has a Bachelor of Business Administration focused in procurement and supply chain management from Masena University. He's currently pursuing a master's degree in project planning and management at the University of Nairobi. He's worked in a nonprofit organization and has gained vast knowledge in research, orphans and vulnerable children programming, entrepreneurship and economic empowerment, training program management, ICT, and team leadership. Welcome so much, Philip, to our session. And now the floor is all yours. Uh, thank you, Joy, uh, for the wonderful introduction. And uh, it's my pleasure to, to be here today to um, share knowledge with all of you. I, I believe mine is just to lead the team uh, because uh, we're going to learn from each other. So, um, I don't have the monopoly uh, on uh, m and knowledge, but then I believe that uh, if we're all able to share, then we'll be able to learn from each other. So uh, today uh, we're going to learn um, more on, uh, oh, let me, are you able to see my screen? Not yet. Okay, um, how about now? Yes. Okay, so um, so as, as I, was, I was saying, so uh, we're going to learn today on Emandi on and uh, how we can uh, implement effectively uh, monitoring and evaluation in our CBOs and NGOs to ensure that we are able to meet our goals. Because I believe every NGO and uh, uh, CBO, just like any other organization, we all have vision, we have uh, goals that we'd like to achieve uh, and mission. Uh, so, if you don't really conduct a mandi, then you'll never be able to know whether you're headed towards the right direction. So, uh, the session today, we have two objectives to achieve. Um, yeah, so so the, the, the first objective, we are uh, we're just going to go through principles, objectives, and processes of project monitoring and evaluation. And then uh, the second objective uh, for today, uh, we're going to go through... Uh, I mean, uh, we'll ensure that uh, we, are able, we are able to provide sufficient understanding of the role of monitoring evaluation in rural development and also to be able to judge the effectiveness of our uh, uh, existing project and D systems. And uh, 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 this is business enterprises, but then uh, I know we are working with CBOs and NGOs today. Uh, so uh, the first question that we're having is what is an M&D? But then before we go uh, through this question, uh, what I always like to ask people is always to think, you know, most of the time we normally want to think about successes. But then I'd like uh, maybe maybe at the chat box and, and the Q&A, maybe if you, I'm very sure uh, all, if not majority of us, are witness projects and programs and organizations that really uh, were doing well, but then all of a sudden they failed. Um, uh, mine, if I can be able to share with you, is uh, I was working with a, a, a European funded uh, project that was in Kisumu. 
So the project that you are doing was geared because there was a lot of cholera then in uh, in the western part of Kenya. So the project was supposed to be able to eradicate um, uh, these communicable diseases that are caused by uh, unhygienic uh, places. That so technically it was about water and hygiene project. Um, so we were able to do a very good uh, 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 proposal. Uh, before even that, we did uh, the concept not, and then it was accepted, and then we did a proposal, and it went through. We developed a budget, and and the project was almost worth um, one million Kenyan shillings. That's like ten thousand USD, um, which was okay. It's not that much, but then it's also not that small. So we felt that this community needed uh, to have uh, a toilet, and uh, especially a toilet next to the water places because they had uh, like a. a an underground uh, uh, water that was coming from a point. So we felt that we should have a toilet so that people don't defecate next to that water water, water, water source. So we developed a very good idea, uh, developed a very good, nice toilet there. But then the funny thing after launching the toilet, people are still going just uh, to defecate just outside the toilet. You know, we have a toilet, but then no one was using the toilet, but then, People are still going to the bush, which was next to the water point. So it means that the, the, the project was really well defined and well executed. But then now when it came to utilization by the beneficiary, no one was be, uh, utilizing it. So when the donor was looking for a report, then you're not able to report because we've spent 10,000 USD, but then uh, we're not able to showcase the impact of this project into uh in the community so it was a very big failure from our end but then it was something that we we're able to learn from so i'm very sure that all of us we have stories so i believe that you can be able to to share the stories and then joyce uh, will be able to sample a few once we're done with the presentation so um with those with that story in in uh in mind now i'm going to take you through what is known as a mandi that is monitoring and evaluation so what is a mandi so a mandi is a process. Process. I think we need to highlight that. So process of continual gathering. Of information and assessment of um, what's related whether there are any unintended uh, positive or negative effects from a project and its activities. So it is an integral part of project cycle and of good management practice. So uh, the way I have said uh, 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 in the story that I've said, uh, when, when we were doing the concept note to the donor, definitely we had uh, the project goal. The project goal was, was to do away with uh, uh, communal, uh, it's called open def defecation. So we wanted to empower the community so that they, they would stop uh, 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 doing their businesses in the public, but then now utilize the, the toilets that you are building. So that uh, in the end of it, we would reduce these communica communicable diseases that are caused uh, through uh, unhygienic uh, 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 surroundings. That was what we did, we did intended. So uh, as a person, we need to be able to monitor uh, continually to see whether whatever we have set as our goal and objective are being met by whatever we are implementing. So that is MND. So you need to gather information uh, continually so that you're able to, to see whether you, you're headed towards your, your desired goal. So why MND? So uh, the first one is for accountability. So as I said, that uh, most of uh, projects, and I believe if not majority of the projects are donor funded. So you need to be accountable to the donor. So it means that uh, whenever you, 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 you're doing a proposal, the proposal comes in terms of work plan and also the budget. So the work plan uh, sets the three things. So first of all, there's the, uh, there's the cost uh, attached to the, the work plan. And then there's the scope. Scope, we have the target. So, so we have like the working area, we have the target in terms of numbers. And then the other one is timeline. So we should be able to account in terms of those three aspects. So 
And then the other thing is for operational management. So um, if you're able to collect data even before starting this project, would have known why the community are using open defecation. And through that, you would have been able to make a decision whether it, that was a very a good idea to build them a toilet or maybe do something else that would have motivated them now to stop open defecation. And then that also comes in, in terms of strategic management. So strategic management means whether uh, do we go or do we go forward with this project or do we uh, uh, do it in another way? And then for capacity building. So um, I'm very sure from the uh, evaluation that we're able to do after our community uh, failed to use the trailer that we built, from there we're able to develop planning. We're able to learn that it's never just about building a very beautiful toilet that will motivate people to, to use it. So from there, we're able to learn reasons as to why people are never able to use this toilet. And there were various reasons. Number one was participation. When you are doing all this, we, were never, we, we never really had the community and their leadership in planning and also execution of the project. So we're able to learn that for you to, to do an effective project, everybody needs to participate. So that was one reason and capacity building is just just about learning so we're, we're able to learn and through monitoring and evaluation we're able to know that community plays a very integral part in planning and execution of an uh, 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 a project so from there i'm very sure uh, if we were to build another one would have done it uh, differently so why is uh a mandy important in any organization so MD uh, or monitoring evaluation is very important for an organization, whether it's to be it a, a self help group, be it a CBO or NGO. So the first reason why MD is very important is because it gives a clear and concise information on what is happening. So if you if if you if you don't have funded and like let's say uh, within uh, the, the agreement that you sign with the donor, you always agree like maybe you'll be sending reports quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. So normally you don't wait until maybe at the end of the quarter is when you track what has been happening. But normally you track, you get the numbers weekly. Then from the numbers that you, you, you're collecting, you're able to see whether you're headed towards the goal or you're able to see like some an, uh, uh, not normal trends and you're able to work on it. So, so Mandy help us to, to get to get to gain clear and conscious information on what is happening. So if you don't uh, monitor a project, then it means that you'll never be able to know what is really happening. And then the other one is input monitoring. So for instance, um, we we have like let's say a project worth 10 million. We've already spent uh, 800,000. You know, you need to monitor whether this money that you're spending is really um uh, helping uh, uh the project towards achieving its goal and objective so it helps you monitor the input input in terms of resources so resources we have um equipment we have uh, human and we also have financial so we'll be able to see we we have like 20 social workers uh what is this uh the contribution of these 20 social workers in there in the project and then risk and reward evaluation. So uh, um, when you're monitoring, you'll be able to identify risks even before they happen. So that helps you to, uh, to put um, uh, measures in place that will be able to handle the risks in case they happen. And then it also helps you assess new possibilities. So when, when you um, conduct monitoring evaluation, you'll be able to know whether the project is, is doing well and you're able to even expand it to other places. And then definitely they have talked, uh, M&D help us to prepare, like, let's say the, 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 the various reports that we do in terms of pro progress. So we have, the, like, let's say the quarterly, the semi-annual and the annual reports. So um, uh, when you conduct M&D, you'll be able to see how you're progressing in terms of uh, achieving the goals and, Objectives and the innovation. Uh, through MD, you'll be able to see that we are not doing well in this uh, aspect and we need to do uh, things differently. And that is now mean that you now be innovative and do things in a way that you've not been doing them so that you can be able to achieve the goals. Now, uh, maybe we cannot define the specifics. So we start with monitoring. 
So monitoring is a continuous collection of data on specified indicators to assess for a development in, uh, intervention. So this, this means a project program or policy. It is imp uh, its implementation in relation to activity schedules and expenditure of allocated funds and its progress and achievement in relation to its objective. So there we've talked about uh, specific areas that we monitor. So first, we monitor specific indicators. So when you're, when you're coming up with a work plan, you normally develop indicators. And uh, in those indicators, you have to monitor them. Like let's say number of people reached. So if it is a project that maybe you need to be uh, reaching out to school children, you need to uh, be monitoring how many have you reached? And what was your target for that quarter or that specific period and then monitor will be able to help you. Then implementation, you can also monitor implementation. So implementation, that in, term, in relation to activity schedules and expenditure. So you can be able to monitor, like, hey, we were supposed to have spent this amount of money by this period. How much have we spent? And uh, how much have we spent? And have we spent it within the period that we had intended to, to spend it? Uh, so monitoring, and then what we need to also understand, monitoring is continuous. This is continuous or continual collection of data. So monitoring, you can do it like every single day, you can be monitoring maybe a specific aspect of uh, the project. But then when you come to evaluation, evaluation is periodic. So evaluation starts even before we start implementation, while monitoring starts after implement, starting of implementation. So the first evaluation that we normally do uh, is always known as the baseline. So baseline will always be able to show you where you are as at the point before you start the project. Like let's say, if it's about, like let's say, um, teenage girl pregnancy, we need to know where are we at the moment in terms of uh, objectives that you'd like to achieve so that you're able to know where are we. And then from there, you're able to develop a work plan that will be able to help you achieve the objective based on the baseline that you have developed. And then maybe at the big, at the middle of the project, you can always do a midterm. And then at the end of it, then you can do end term. And then you can even always uh, conduct another one that is known as uh, impact evaluation. You can always evaluate, check whether the project that implemented had an impact to the intended uh, beneficiaries. So evaluation is normally done periodically and evaluation can even evaluate whether uh, the cost that you incurred was, uh, it's called cost, uh, cost benefit analysis. So you can be able to uh, check whether the cost that you incurred uh, is a the outcome, whether it was really, um, sustainable. So you can be able to make a decision that this project is not sustainable based on cost-benefit analysis and you can always close the business. Then you can always even check on the impact based on um, how the project is impacting, based on how you really intended the project to impact the beneficiaries. So evaluation, as uh, we, are, we are agreeing, is normally done periodically. So you can always do it to assess various aspects of the project. So these are the uh, aspects uh, that we normally look into while conducting evaluation. So the first one is relevance. So uh, if, you are, if you are to conduct a relevance um, evaluation for the project that uh, we failed in, um, I'm very sure if I ask the question, we'd all agree that uh, the project was not relevant to the community because it never met the community need. Uh, the committee needed a project that was to help them uh, uh, eradicate uh, uh, water waterborne diseases, but then we were never able to do that. And then efficiency. So um, was the project done in a manner that was so was at low cost as possible? Uh, that is debatable because, uh, and we need to get data from that so that we're able to do that. But then you should always be able to do that to check. Uh, as I was saying, the cost-benefit analysis. We need something that is sustainable and cost-effective. And then the effectiveness. Did the project change the existing practices in a beneficial manner? How effective is the project to the beneficiaries? And then the impact, the way I was talking about. So normally the impact is always done 
at the end of the project because you cannot impact the long term thing. So you can never be able to determine whether the project is impactful during implementation. So that's normally done uh, some, sometime after the project is closed. And then sustainability. Uh, is the project sustainable? Like let's say if the project was to close today, will the community still uh, continue the practices that you're trying to uh, take them through? Is it a project that can be able to survive post uh, the, the, the funding period? So those are the things that you should be able to evaluate. Um, I don't know if you're okay up to that point and if there's somebody with maybe a question. Okay, so I'm going to take you through now what is known as a MND plan or framework. So it is very important that I'm, um, I'm, I'm taking you through uh, to develop an MND plan for any project that you do. A project could be as low as 20,000 shillings. But then if you don't monitor it, you should start monitoring projects, uh, even those projects that you feel that uh, are not worth uh, 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 developing a MD plan for. Because you, when you start developing an habit of uh, monitoring even the small projects, it means that it's an habit that will, will exist and you'll be able to monitor even uh, now mega projects if you're able to get funding for them. So um, a MD plan is technically uh, uh, something that describes how the whole MD system for the program uh, works. So it includes the indicators, and then who is responsible for collecting uh, uh, the data? Because for you to achieve the indicator, that means we must be having documents and the source doc documents for, for that. And then like what forms and tools do we need uh, or will we use? And how the data will flow through the organization. So that basically, a and plan. So this is just like technically the data flow. So from where are we collecting this data and uh, how collects it and how do we use the, the, the information that we're getting from the data we're collecting. So um, the common terms uh, used in monitoring evaluation plan. So the first one we have input. So input, the way I said, so input is normally the resources that we use. So input include the human resource, and then we have the equipment. Equipment could be those big machines, equipment could be even a pen, anything that enables us to uh, carry out the activity uh, that is not human and that is not financial. So the other input is financial, so that is money. So uh, whenever you hear us talking about input is anything or any resource that we are inputting, in that uh, project or activity uh, for it to happen. And then now output. So output is a tangible result uh, from the input. So like, let's say um, we have an activity, like let's say to go talk uh, to girls on maybe a teenage pregnancy. So the output, so the input is how many staff will be involved and uh, if we need uh, resources like, let's say, uh, flip charts, we need projector, we need all any other resource that we need, and maybe money because we maybe would require transport, and maybe refreshment and haul hire. So the output is the tangible result of the input. So the output for that activity would be number of cars reached. How many cars did we reach within uh, in that activity? Uh, the, 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 other, the other output could be uh, number of sessions held because we have, been, we have uh, put our resources into that. So we'd like to know how many sessions did we hold uh, with, with the resources that we had? Um, how many teachers maybe did we reach? How many schools did we work with? So, so that is the output, the immediate results from the input. And now the outcome is a, a midterm a results of the out the, of the output. So um, if we if we reached out to maybe girls about teenage pregnancy, we can be able to see how many girls 
are now able to understand uh, the reason, like ways of avoiding uh, teenage pregnancy. That is now an outcome. It's something that comes uh, after the output, after reaching out to the girls. Now, what next? So what next is, like let's say the information that we gave, how did the girls consume it? Are we able to know how many girls who are now able to take care of themselves and uh, be able to avoid teenage pregnancy? Uh, how many girls who know maybe how to practice safe, safe sex measures or something like that? So that is now what is known as the outcome. And uh, objectives. So what are the objectives of this program? So the obje objectives are uh, things that you can measure. So it is what is known as, when you're setting objectives, it's say, supposed to be smart, but some, something that's very simple, something that is very measurable, something that is uh, uh, attainable. So you, you, don't, you don't come up with objectives that you cannot achieve. Like let's say you're having a 1 million uh, fund, but then you want to reach out to like almost a thousand schools. That is not possible. So that is not attainable. And then the other one has to be um, realistic. And then it has to be time, time bound. So when you're setting objectives, you must be within the SMART uh, criteria. And then the goal, uh, goal at times is not SMART, but what do you want to achieve with this project? So the project is maybe to, to reduce the number of teenage pregnancy in maybe a, a locality from say 500, uh, which is current, to maybe 300. So that is the goal. So at the end of it, you'll be able to see, it is, you'll be able, you've been able to do. Then we also have impact. So impact is normally sometimes uh, considered as the outcome because it's a midterm uh, sort of, it comes before the goal. And then we have indicators. So indicators is how you measure achievements of outputs, outcomes, and objectives. So how, like let's say if you're talking about uh, reaching out to girls, then the indicator would be how many girls are you intending to reach to? If you're talking about, uh, like let's say, number of schools that you're going to work with, how many uh, schools are you working with? So that is just the indicator. Indicator is something that shows that something is happening. So you should be able to uh, define indicators so of, for the various output outcomes and objectives that you're setting. So the indicators, again, should be measurable, should be accurate, verifiable, specific, time-bound, simple, uh, obtainable, and easy to understand. Anyone uh, should be able to understand without even being there to be able to, uh, to explain to them every single time. So uh, the last thing that we're talking about is uh, principles of monitoring and evaluation system. So first of all, uh, evaluation system should be able to meet uh, needs of all stakeholders. Uh, so that like, let's say, if you're working in an agricultural setup, you're supposed to meet the farmers who are the beneficiaries, the service providers, uh, lead farms in case, in case you're in a consortium, project staff and donor. Uh, the uh, uh, M&D plan should also be able to measure the impact of project strategies um, on the livelihood of those involved, and then identify what needs to be done. Um, so when you talk about what needs to be done is how, where, uh, when, and by whom, and you should be able to identify what works and what doesn't work. And then it's supposed to be sustainable, something that continues even after the end of the project, the way I was able to say, it's supposed to be participatory. Uh, the way I was able to explain that the, the major reason as to why we failed in that project I was talking about, it was because it was not, uh, we did not have the community uh, play a key role in it, in terms of uh, planning, execution, and, uh, and everything um, in terms of just ensuring that the community uh, are participating in it. And they're supposed to be very simple and uh, useful and something that can be used. Uh, so this is what I was talking about. Now the M&D plan in terms of input activity, output, and then the impact. So input, input is quantifiable resources going in to your activities. Um, so that is the 
things that you budget for. So, so, so the way you say these are resources, so it includes human equipment and financial. So activity. So activity, uh, the input use them to conduct activity. So activities, what do you uh what do you do to accomplish your objectives? Uh, what else do you do to accomplish these objectives? So, so technical activities are things that you do to help you uh, 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 generate output that will help you achieve the, uh, the, 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 the objectives and the, and the goals of the project. And then the output is immediate results from your activity, e.g. people trained and then services provided. And then outcomes are longer term expected results related to the changes in knowledge, attitude, behavior, and then outcomes usually give an indication whether the program goals are being achieved. So the way I'd say it, so here, like let's say you've been training girls on the uh, teenage pregnancy. So from there, we should be able to know how many girls now understand how they can be able to take care of themselves and avoid teenage pregnancy. So that is normally uh, based on uh, attitude, uh, behavior, and also knowledge. And then the impact is now long-term effect uh, on the incidences. So like, let's say uh, we're able to reach out to girls, uh, girls who are able to understand how they should be able to take uh, care of themselves and also avoid uh, maybe situations that would uh, maybe uh, put them in a, at risk of, of getting teenage pregnancy. So uh, uh, impact should be able to tell us now, if at uh, that point we had 500, teenage pregnancies. Now, how many teenage pregnancies do we have after all the interventions that we put in place? So like, let's say if uh, uh, our, uh, uh, we had 500 and now we have 100, it means we are having an impact because the, the number of teenage pregnancies has gone down. So, so that is now how we define impact. So, um, so when you talk about um, I've gone back. So when, when you talk about uh, uh, a Mandi framework, this is how it looks like now in a re real situation. So how do we remove this one up here? Okay, let me take it down. Are we, just are we able to read up there? So I just want to take us through an example of a result uh, or a Mandi framework for awareness of raising campaign around domestic violence legislation. So this is an example of a uh, and framework, something that can be able, all be able to, to develop. So uh, what is the goal of this project? So the goal of this project is women and girls empowered to claim their rights under law. And then what is what are the objectives? So the objectives we have, uh, uh, we have how many? We have two objectives, yes. So the first objective is to increase knowledge of new domestic uh, violence uh, provision among uh, community members, that is men and women in town of Risa. So Risa is a hypothetical town by 50% in two years. And then the second objective is to double the number of women and girls in Risa who claim they would report, uh, report violence perpetrated against them in three years. So this project, as we can see, uh, as you can see, the objectives are smart. They have all the the the, the smart. Philip, uh, you're frozen. We can't hear you. Let's give him a few minutes. Maybe he's having internet challenges. Okay, he's dropped off. Let, let us just give him a few minutes to reconnect maybe. But still, you can still post your questions and answers in the question box and um, we will address them at the end of the presentation.
Hello. Welcome back, Philip. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, we had the blackouts. So uh, my internet went off. Mm. Yes, so um, uh, 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 is my is my PowerPoint still on or is it off? No, it's not. I can present if you want me to. Uh, it's okay. L let me. Yeah. Yeah. So are we are we okay? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. So um, uh, I was talking about inputs. So inputs uh, are technically uh, the resources that you'd ever you'd like to achieve. So so as I said, they are they are human resource, the equipment, and financial. So we we should be able to to note that. And then after that, we have the activity. So the activity. Uh, so for this project that we're talking about, so we activities that we are planning for. Are our community discussions, uh, focus group with the target population. So that, that is for, with the women that are, are, are being uh, affected by by by, by uh, domestic violence and uh, maybe uh, women that could easily uh, targeted uh, with uh, domestic violence. And then uh, we also have assessment of the population knowledge and understanding of domestic violence and its legal provision. Uh, matches. So those are the activities that we have planned for in this uh, uh, small project that we're having. So what do we want to achieve with this? So how uh, we are, we are going to do it is in is both in input and activities. And now what do we want to achieve with this um, with this our small project? So the first one we have output. So output is posters. So once we have these uh, community discussions and the focus group, then we develop the posters. Uh, that is the mural, then uh, SMS text, then email letters, writing, radio sports, and TV campaigns. So how many posters were, were we able to develop? How many murals were we able to, to do? And then how many emails and radio sports and TV campaigns that uh, we were engaged in? And uh, for those focus group discussion, how many groups uh, or FGDs did we have? So we should be able to, to discuss, I mean, to be able to do that. And then now outcome that we're saying that was a mid-term uh, achievement. Uh, so our intended outcome is increased community level knowledge around domestic violence and its uh, legislative provision. And then now we have impact so impact is the long term uh, uh, outcome of the activities that we've been able to, to carry out so number one is the number i mean the impact that we we anticipate to have is that the number of women seeking recourse under domestic violence legislation and increase mechanism for protecting their rights so as we all know like most women uh, or even men uh, go through uh, domestic violence, but they really never want to talk about it. So if you're able to organize forums where they're able to discuss and they're able to understand their rights, then an impact should be something that women are now empowered enough to be able to know their rights and be able to uh, uh, report in case their rights uh, is infringed upon. So that is uh, technically uh, our, our framework. But then now, when, uh, when you talk about Resources is between activities and inputs. That's where our resources are utilized. And then now the results uh, normally start to be seen from the output and then outcome and then the impact, which will lead to the achievement of the objectives and in long term, the goal of the project. But uh, implementation starts from input and goes up to the goal. But then when you're planning, you normally start planning from the top going down. So you, first of all, uh, you can never have inputs before you even know which goal you done you'd like to achieve. So in developing the framework, normally you are advised to start with the top as you go down. So so you're supposed to come up with a goal. Like let's say you you define the goal for the of the project, and then after that you uh, after defining the goal, then now you develop the objectives. 
uh, and then after developing the objectives, then be able to define the impact, the desired impact uh, of the project. And then after after doing that, we we should then we should be able to uh, uh, develop the uh, outcomes, and then we go to outputs, and then we go to activities, uh, and then the inputs. So that's how you develop it. So you you plan from top down, but then implement from down going uh, upwards. So um, that is all about our our framework. Uh, I don't know, it's not moving to the next slide. Yes, so uh, when you talk about data flow, so this is how the data flow. So first of all, when you talk about the source, so the source is uh, where, what and where are we collecting the data. So what, what is it like? Let's say, so we need to know where are we collecting the, the data from. And then collection, how do we collect this data? So from where and how often? So how, like, let's say this data when you're collecting it, how, how long and where do we collect and do we collect this data from? And then uh, collection and storage, how are the data aggregated? So uh, this is where maybe you use apps, so like let's say um you, we have nowadays we have the copo toolbox uh there are those that use uh, sps there are those, those those that use excel so it depends with how you know that uh still collect data from the hard copies you just sit down and, and and collect them and also if you're maybe you're doing qualitative so so yeah so there's so many ways that you can be able to collect your data and then how do you store the data? So there are those data that are very insensitive, they are very sensitive that uh, you can never just leave them on top of the table. So we need to decide on how do you store them? Do you store them under lock and key? Do you store, you know, and when they're in the computer and maybe other devices, how do you, do you store them under password and such kind of stuff? And then analysis. So after a collection, you should now be able to analyze so that you're able to develop trends and such kind of stuff. And then after analyzing, then you need to report, develop reports. And then after that is use data for decision making. So that is now how the data flows. Uh, don't worry about that. We will be able to share the slides with you. And uh, then the next slide, which is uh, the final one is, um, thank you for taking time to listen to me. Uh, so what I'm going to do next, just to take time to uh, be able to answer any question uh, and as many as possible. Thank you, Philip, for that wonderful session. It was very informative. Mm. I really enjoyed it. Uh, mm. It's uh, very informative, especially for people who have CBOs and NGOs, people who are planning to apply for grants. Like right now, Wells Mountain Initiative is providing, um, it has open application for scholars to apply for grants, now you have to send in proposals. Uh, we've received so many proposals and considering that uh, most of the uh, scholars are not really, don't know much information about uh, how to write a proposal. I think this session has given them a light on how to present a good proposal for funding. So there's a question from Patrick, he's asking, um hello you say that the impact are measured when the project is over but what about the cbos or ngos which are long lasting do you measure their impacts as they continue or how do you uh, measure the impact of cbos that are long lasting okay um i don't know uh, maybe let me try to answer the way i understand it but then i uh when you're measuring impact you don't measure impact uh, of the entire organization because i believe an, an organization will implement various projects so the impact that we're measuring is like let's say you're you currently may be doing a project on uh, maybe you're talking to the community to stop various behavior that maybe leads to communicable uh, communicable diseases and infections. So you 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 are you are, you are uh, conducting uh, uh, sessions, and you've done that, and uh, you're done with the project now. And you now need to to know what was the impact 
of the project that we carried out. Because as organization, I believe um, what you do is projects. You don't like really have a, a, a impact. I think that would be more of beneficiary satisfaction or getting feedback from the beneficiaries which I think that that also you can be able to do within period of time. So maybe you meet your beneficiaries quarterly. So you'll be, you'll be able to know what the beneficiaries feel about you uh, as organization. So, but the impact, uh, we're only able to measure by projects that we're implementing. But then if you want to know that we're having impact to the community as an organization, then you need to, that one you can do uh, periodically, you can also agree that maybe after every quarter, we have sessions with the community and they'll be able to give you feedback on how they feel that you're reaching them as an organization. So I don't know whether... Um, I got the question right, or maybe Patrick will be able to... to, to, to Okay, so um, I have another question. Patrick will let us know if his question has been answered. You mentioned that there are tools that are used for monitoring and there are tools that are used for evaluation. If you could just give us yes. examples of these tools that are used during monitoring and those ones that are used during evaluation. Okay, so uh, for monitoring, since we said that it was uh... It's a continual uh, activity. So monitoring uh, it depends with uh, from project to project. So it depends with the project how would you like to collect data. So these are definitely tools that we develop as a as a project. So it could be just a basic table. So like let's say once you're from training, you just tell us we uh, just come up with a table like let's say name of activity, number of people reached, maybe male, female. So these tables would help you. Um, help you uh, towards achieving the various indicators and deliverables. So, so that that um, yes. So, um, I'd like uh, I've worked in various projects, and what I can say that uh, for each and every project, we always normally because you know when what you're monitoring is the indicators. So, the indicators. There are so many ways that you can always monitor them. So, each and every project will always come up with a tool. But then for evaluation. Mostly we, because evaluation, the way you said we are collecting data from the baseline for the midterm and, and uh, 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 end line, and also maybe impact, expose, and something like that. So uh, what we normally use for evaluation mostly is because we are reaching out to the beneficiaries, we just want to know whether this thing was impactful to them. So mostly we use questionnaires, we use surveys, and, um, and, uh, uh, also, uh, the, the other tool that we use is, uh, no, okay, that, that is analysis. I wanted to say that you 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 analyze, like let's say the qualitative, but that is now in the analysis bit of it. But the qualitative we normally get from questionnaires. So technically it's questionnaires. And also for evaluation also, uh, you know, like let's say when using the quantitative, you just get them from from like let's say past organization that implemented, like let's say you want to see number of people who are affected by certain, uh, maybe uh, Nini, so you also use research. You can uh, research on those numbers and be able to uh, collect them in a table. So I don't know whether I was able to answer you. Yes, you did. And then uh, at some point you mentioned FGDs for people like me and you who have been in this uh, research world for the long for the longest time. We know what FGDs is, but now uh, for layman, our participants, if you just explain what okay. FGDs are and uh, um, what are they used for and how important are they in project monitoring and evaluation. Okay, I, I am sorry for that. You know, when you work with the NGO, you 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 end up. <laughs> up using a lot of uh, uh, acronyms. So FGD uh, focus group discussion. Maybe probably when you're collecting and uh, you don't have the resources, you cannot reach to every individual. But then uh, the best way to do it is get these individuals in groups and have a discussion. So that is what is known as FGD. So it's called focus group discussion. So uh, from the forecast description, we use what is known as 
interviews. So you can interview these individuals in a group and then be able to get the understanding of various aspects that you're trying to, uh, to evaluate. And then from there, you can be able to develop a report. So I don't know whether I've been able to answer that. So at, uh, how useful is it for element A in a project? Um, first of all, participation. Uh, m and you can never be a successful m and person or you can never achieve a successful uh, project if uh, you're not having the community participate. And then there are those topics that uh, probably you feel that an individual may not be able to open up and discuss with you. But then when they are in a group, then they can be able to contribute and, uh, and be able to give you feedback. Uh, so it is very useful for topics that you feel that maybe individuals should be so shy to talk about but then when they are in group then they'll get the group psychology and uh and be able to 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 give you feedback so um and then the way I, i'd also say it, in a monday also you know there sometimes your time and uh, budget constraint so you're not able to like let's say you wanted to reach out to 20 people so you're not able to reach out to these 20 people individually because of maybe time or because of resources. So you call these individuals together and then now just have a, a discussion with them. And then maybe for an, an one hour and once you're done with them, uh, you would have reached your uh, uh, sampled target. Okay, thank you so much. And then there's a comment here from Patrick. He say, thank mm. you, I'm answered. To add on, there are some organizations with, which have one project which covers different aspects of lives of beneficiaries and are long lasting. I think knowing how many beneficiaries they can be able to reach can also be impact analysis for ongoing projects. That was his comment. Now, there's also another question here. From okay, I, I, just, just to maybe talk to, to Patrick, you know, maybe we, we need to know which project is that because, you know, in, defini in defining a project, a project and the way, um, in project management, there are those that we call uh, project constraint. So the project constraint is like a triangle. So uh, number one is cost. There I talked about cost or budget. We call it budget of the cost of the project. And then uh, uh, scope. Scope is like uh, which area are you covering? Uh, which target, maybe population, because you cannot target everyone in the population. So what is the, maybe the population target? If it, is it children, is it women, is it men? So so, so the, the demographic and also like, let's say the numbers you want to reach. And then the, one, the other one that is very specific in project is timeline. So you can never have uh, a long, like uh, a project must have a timeline. So you cannot say like, you're, you're, you have an organization that is always implementing. So it could be maybe the same project, but then the project is now maybe in phase something. Because otherwise, uh, you if you say that the project is long, long, uh, like life, lifelong, then now uh, a donor will ask you the sustainability of the project. Because you cannot tell me that if you're, if you're fighting malaria, you can fight malaria forever in a certain uh, uh, location. So it could be you guys, are conducting a malaria project, but then you do it in maybe a village, you get done with the village maybe after two years, then do the same project now in another village, but you cannot be having one malaria project every year, every year. And then. then you see, it will be really hard for you to like really convince a donor that you've had a, a malaria project in an area for like 10 years. It wouldn't make sense. Okay, there's a question here from Akim. He's asking between mm. hiring an external party for monitoring and evaluation and doing the M&D yourself, which is the best approach to have effective results? Uh, okay, so so monitoring evaluation normally is done internally because you cannot have someone uh, external coming daily to help you collect data. So for monitoring evaluation, unless you're well-funded, <laughs> then that's when you can outsource. But all the organizations that I know, normally you get like maybe just one person doing the money for you. But then for evaluation, it depends with who is funding you. But then for evaluation and also to be objective, uh, you always want to get someone external to uh, evaluate you. Because you know, when you're evaluating yourself, you, you, you want to be very objective. And there is always some uh, partiality when you're doing the evaluation yourself. So for monitoring, you you don't need to get an external party to monitor for, uh, your project for you because it will be costly. You won't have someone 
daily because monitoring in some organization, like where I work, we monitor some aspect of the uh, project like on, on a single uh, day. Every every single day we, 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 we check on the data and how we are performing. But then for evaluation, we normally have like, let's say baseline. So you get someone external to do it for you. A midterm, you get someone to do it for you and then end term. So because when it's done by an external party, then it will be objective and it will be impartial. It's just yeah, like okay. setting an exam for yourself. Like you've been studying and then uh, you've been studying, like let's say mathematics, there I hated mathematics. And then I <laughs> set exam for myself to check whether I'm really good at it. Trust me, I will just set things that I'm very sure I'll pass uh, yeah, easily. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So another one is asking M and D in general, what is the most acceptable term here? Is it measuring and evaluation or monitoring and evaluation? Uh, I'd go with monitoring mm -hmm. because it's technically you're monitoring on, or you're tracking uh, the performance of this project. So it is monitoring. Okay. And then there's yes. another question here from Patrick. When you do M and E in the middle of a project and you find that you are off, do you call off the project? Um, that is normal. Uh, I'm very sure um, in every single project, um, there are always are times that you think you're doing well, but then now when you collect data, then you'll always see that you're not doing well. So um, that's why we say that you use data for decision making. So it, it will depend with how off you are. So there, there are off that may be something that you won't, like let's say you've used 90% of the donor's money, but then you realize that you're not even close to achieving the intended target. You know, you can never recover the 90% budget that you've used. But like let's say you've used 30%, you can always now um, refocus, uh, redefine the indicators and such kind of stuff and work within the 70% to try achieve the 100% that you wanted to, to achieve. So that one, it will depend, it will, I think it will depend with um, how off you are, but then that is why now we, we call in data so that we can be able to make decisions. Okay, thank you so much, Philip. That, there's a question here from Rogers. He's asking mm -hmm. of recent, most funders are emphasizing the component of result-based monitoring and evaluation, not the tradition, mm. the traditional M and E of considering outputs. Kindly elaborate mm. more about it. Okay, on RBM, uh, results-based. Okay, so result-based is uh, uh, like, uh, and, and I think that is more of a, a USID. We call it EBI, evidence-based. Uh, interventions so like let's say it's not about how many people you reached how many how many sessions you conducted but how many people you reached and are able to now change their behaviors and attitudes towards something so um um that is now the way to go because most of the donors are now not considering just the output but then they want now the impact and that's and the usid right now most of their activities are evidence-based. So they'd like to know if you reached out to girls, how many have changed their behavior? So like, let's say, if you're targeting, like let's say girls with uh, PrEP, PrEP is, um, they are pre this, it's called a pre-exposure. Yeah, you know, Joyce, they're in that area, you're better than me. <laughs> so it's not about how many girls you reached out with PrEP information, but then how many girls you reached out with PrEP information and are actually, utilizing the prep so so that, that is how now we are monitoring the project so i agree with him so um and then right now we i think we are going to move away from just monitoring and evaluation but then we're now going to move to um school cla school collaboration learning and adaptation school that is i think what your side is now trying to focus on so how how much are you able to collaborate like let's say with other uh, like minded organization and be able to achieve a similar result. How you're able to learn from, uh, like, let's say, from activities that you're able to do. And then, how do you adopt the learnings that you've been able to do? So, those are the approaches that are currently being uh, really put in place by the various donors. Okay. 
Fred Okesh is saying thank you for your answers to the questions. And then Patrick is also saying thank you for all the responses. It was mind opening. And then Patrick is asking if it is possible to connect with you. Uh, I, uh, I have some important questions and guidance I would like to ask on uh, projects lifespan. So um, Patrick will get in touch with you. Uh, we'll, we'll advise on how we're going to support you in this area. I don't know if okay. there's anyone who has any question. Okay, and then I have a question for you. You mentioned sensitive data. Uh, what are some of the examples of sensitive data? Okay, sensitive data is that uh, data that uh, touches on privacy and confidentiality of uh, beneficiaries or respondents or clients. So like, let's say you're working in an HIV um, uh, project. You know, uh, HIV status, uh, uh, you never, you're never supposed to expose someone HIV status. And uh, you know that data that can really sell. So maybe you'd be having data with the clients HIV status and then you didn't have password. And then someone else with the, a very uh, weird intentions, access your laptop and then get the data. And then all your clients status is now exposed maybe in a blog. Uh, you know uh, the consequences of that. Probably you lose your job and probably uh, you'll be jailed because of uh, uh, data acts, the various data uh, breach and acts. So sensitive data is data that will expose beneficiary confidential uh, data. And even before you conduct this uh, research and I mean uh, uh, evaluation, part of the ethics is normally to ask uh, beneficiaries if they are willing uh, to respond voluntarily and be able to tell them that the data that you're collecting will be privately uh, and confidentially kept. So if it is a guest exposed to someone who was not supposed to access it, means that you have breached the agreement that you had with the beneficiary. So that would be bad. So that's why I'm saying that there are those kind of data that you must be able to know how to store them. So there are those data that must be always under lock and key, either in a cabinet or in a, a storage room, or if you have them in soft copy, then they must always be password uh, protected. And even your device must be password protected so that you don't allow unauthorized access. Thank you so much, Philip. You've mentioned a very sensitive topic on ethics. And I think uh, maybe in the next academy, uh, we will plan with Lisa and team on how we're going to incorporate this specific topic on ethics and project management and how we are going to protect our participants. So it okay. has been a very nice session. It's now five minutes past the hour. We appreciate all the attendees for taking their time to participate and thank you, Philip, for taking your time to educate us and uh, enlightening us more about monitoring and evaluation. Okay, thank you. And uh, it was a pleasure meeting all of you. And I uh, hope that we meet in the project world. The project world is very wide and uh, you never know where you'll meet someone. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Have a good uh, yeah. evening. You too.